Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today, I'm going to show you a relatively easy stitch, believe it or not, um, in knitting. And this is a mosaic knitting pattern called the 3N1 Tweed. And, you know, it's a little bit different than what we're used to doing, um, but it's a technique that I've seen, and I thought, hmm, let's give it a try. Now, it's similar, similar, not exact, but similar to fair isle knitting in that you are working with two different colored strands of yarn. However, instead of working color A, color B, color A, color B on the same row, no, you work two rows of color A, and then two rows of color B, and back and forth and back and forth that way, utilizing slip stitches. Now, if you look closely, see how the, the red right here, there's a slip stitch right there. And that's how the yarn is carried up. And see how there's this little white one right here? That's a slip stitch. And that way, you can achieve a really gorgeous look. Now, the back obviously is very different from the front. This is really a one-sided piece. However, it is very neat. And the, the floats, because it is just a, uh, a slipping of one stitch, the floats, see, let me show you what a, a float looks like. See, like this, this right here, this is a float. You know, this little bump of yarn, you know, and then let's see. Yeah, like right over here, it's in a little float. You know, so these floats, they're not that long. So they're not going to really get caught on anything, you know, any more than ordinary knitting would do. Fair Isling, if you have big floats, well, it's very easy to, you know, get your fingers and whatnot caught in there. So this would make an awesome blanket, by all means, um, a hot pad, um, you know, a stitch for a sweater or that sort of thing. A scarf, well, if you don't mind one side looking like this, hey, you could do a scarf too. Or, ooh, 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 if you did a cowl, this would be really neat. Um, also, it is very, very flexible. It is not stiff uh, in spite of the, the thickness. It's very squishy, and it is very flexible for a stitch. You know, it's very flexible, which for me is a must. Now, enough of my rambling. Let me give you some of the uh, well details. Um, I used, it was a worsted weight yarn, which is a four-ply yarn, and this was Vanna's Choice, both colors. Also, I would strongly recommend that in spite of the fact that you're using two different colors of yarn, you use the same brand, because even if one says, you know, that, you know, that it's a, a worsted four-weight and the other one's a worsted four-weight, well, not all worsted four-weights are created equal. So, I would strongly suggest using the same brand brand on the same piece. It would be a great stash buster, but I would really, really strongly recommend you be very careful about the weight of the yarn. Otherwise, it's going to mess you up. Also, I used do, 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 size 10 knitting needles. These are a six, yeah, my focus is great, six millimeter uh, knitting needles. Um, and uh, I found that that worked really well for my particular tension. You can use whatever works for you, but I always like to let you know, um, you know, what kind of yarn I used, even though I'm not sponsored, what kinds of needing, you know, needles and hooks I use, um, you know, so that you can duplicate the results if you so choose. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All righty, so for your beginning, um, basically what I did was I cast on my stitches and then I knit a row of stitches and then I started in. However, it really wasn't necessary because as you can see, see right here, got a little bump and I got a little bump right here, um, because the pattern itself starts, it's a rows one through four pattern, but since you're starting off with your initial color, you really don't need to do this. And I'll... I'm going to make more sense of this. Trust me, okay? So instead of, you know, you're having your little bumps right here, which really don't make any sense with your slip stitches, we're going to do things a little bit differently from my swatch, all right? So that being said, you need a multiple 
of four stitches plus an additional three stitches cast on. So what I did was a total of, I believe, 19 stitches. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Yes, I did a total of 19 stitches, which will make a cute little swatch. And so for the first row, just to get yourself established, just a knit row with color A. And again, I'm using Vanna's Choice because it is nice and soft and it, it flows really well. Um, some of the other worsted weight yarns, they're great, but I found that when working uh, color work, um, like Fair Isling or like this, they're a little too stiff and a little too thick. And um, if you then use bigger needles to accommodate then the color work doesn't quite work out as well because you can see the colors that you're trying to hide because of the uh, the larger needles. So there, there are, you know, pros and cons, checks and balances uh, when using certain yarns. Uh, whenever I do fair isle knitting, I typically do use this brand of yarn, typically. Not always, but typically, because I find that it works rather well. All right. And so I'm just knitting this first row, just more as, you know, a, uh, a foundation, if you will, to work off of. Okay? Okay. And then we're going to add on our secondary color. And really get cooking with gas. All right, just two more. And okay, so that is essentially just to create a foundation, if you will, to work off of, because sometimes it just doesn't look that nice if you work immediately from the cast on. All right. So that is our foundation row. No big deal. And we're going to continue on with our first row. All right. All righty. So for row one, I'm just going to take my secondary color of yarn and I'm just going to tie it onto our first yarn. Okay. So I'm just going to tie that and then I'm going to scooch it on up to our piece here. And we're going to work now with color B. All right. So starting right in, we're going to knit one. With our color B, like so. All right. Now, the repeat for this row is after you knit one, it is to slip one, and you're always slipping one purlwise, which means basically tip to tip going through this way, okay? Not knitwise, which would be this way, all right? Very important. So slipping purlwise, just slip the stitch like so. <clears throat> and then knit three stitches. So after you slip one, you knit three. Now also, when you are knitting your next stitches, don't be too tight. I have a death grip, okay? So I speak from experience. Do not knit too tightly. The same rules for fair eyeing also apply. You know, you don't want your, your yarn to be too tight, otherwise it's going to pucker and look atrocious. Trust me. You know, you want to be looser than tighter. Okay. So as you can see, that one, that orange one is our slip stitch. And then that yellow loop right there, that's a float. It's a small float. So it's not too much to worry about. All right. So then we're just going to continue repeating with a slip one 
knit three, slip one, knit three, slip one, knit three. So going to slip this next one and then knit three, making sure that you're slipping purlwise and knitting regularly. Two and three. Also, it helps to sort of spread your stitches on your needle so that you won't be inclined to uh, be too tight. So slipping one and then knitting the next three. Okay, scooch your stitches on down. Slip one, knit three, okay, and when you reach the last two stitches, what you want to do is slip that one and then knit the last one. Alrighty. And that is the end of our first row, okay? It looks complicated, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll fly right through it. It's only a four row repeat and every other row is essentially the same. So it's not that bad, all right? So we'll continue right along. Alrighty, for row two, just gonna do a quick recap. This, row one, this is the right side. The wrong side works a little bit differently because with the, the right side, the yarn was in the back when we were slipping. On the wrong side, which is this side for row two, the yarn when we're slipping is going to be in the front, okay? Because that way we won't be crossing over our pretty little slip stitches. So again, this will make more sense as we continue on. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to do repeats. You know it, so don't fret. Don't worry. It's okay. All right, so now for row two, we are going to start again with color B still, okay? We're going to start with a, a knit one. All right, then we need to slip one, but the yarn is in the back, right? Well, we got to bring it to the front. So bring the yarn to the front, okay? Then we need to slip that same stitch, okay? Why is my camera not focusing well? Or is it just me? All right, so slipping again, purlwise, slip purlwise like so, then bring the yarn to the back again because we need to do knit stitches again, all right? So after knitting one, bringing the yarn to the front, slipping your slip stitch, then bring the yarn to the back again, then knit three. So you're following the same color scheme. It's just a matter of changing your slipping from the back to the front, okay? So knitting these next three stitches, one, two, three. We have another slip stitch, so bring the yarn to the front. Slip your slip stitch. Bring the yarn to the back. Knit the next three. Now, I know this seems like a lot to take in, but it will make sense as you go on. Trust me. Also, I would strongly suggest that you watch the video first, then try it. Because if you're trying to learn it as you're watching it, it can be very frustrating. Believe you me, I know. So as you can see, I brought my yarn to the front. I'm going to slip my stitch, bring the yarn to the back and knit my next three. Because trying to learn and do at the same time, quite often it's very easy to blow a fuse. I do it myself. So I find that it's good to just, you know, sort of take a step back. 
All right, so then bring the yarn to the front, slip your slip stitch, bring it to the back, knit your next three, All right, bring it to the front one last time, slip your slip stitch, bring it to the back, and knit your last stitch. All right, and that's the end of row two. So when you turn the work to the right side again, you can see that when we were bringing the yarn to the front so that we could slip stitch, we weren't going over our slip stitches. We weren't interfering with them on the right side, facing side, side. <laughs> um, because you want that pattern to be consistent. All right. So we will continue right along. All right. Alrighty, row three. So for row three, we're going to be working with color A again, which is our orange color. So I'm going to take my yellow and scooch that to the back, and I'm going to grab my orange and bring it to the front. So basically just taking my yellow, scooching it to the back, and I'm going to work my, with my orange now. Now there are a lot of different ways in which you can handle color changes. This is just mine personally. You know, it is not law. It is just how I do it. All right. So for row three, what we are going to do is also be sure that you're working with your working yarn, not with, you know, not with your tails because that, that can get very confusing. Trust me. Again, I know. All right, so with color A on the right side, we're going to start by actually grabbing our yarn here, and we're going to start by knitting three, one, and two, and three with color A. Then, because this is the right side, the slip stitches are done with the yarn in the back. Okay, so after knitting three, we slip one, okay, and then we knit three. One, two, and three. Slip the next one, and then knit the next three. One, and two, and three. Okay, slip the next one always purl-wise. Okay, and then knit the next three. One, two, and three. See the pattern starting already? Isn't that gorgeous? Now take a look where we had our slip stitches from the previous row, they go over the yellow. And now these yellow slip stitches are essentially gonna go over the orange. It's so awesome how it works. All right, so I did my three orange. Now I slip one more. And then I knit the last three. So that's one. two, and three to finish up the right side with color A. All right, and then we shall continue right along. All righty. All righty, row four. So 
for row four, again, this is the wrong side. So whenever we're slipping, the yarn needs to be in front. Otherwise, we're just knitting. It's all good. And basically, again, what you're doing is, since we're working with color A, we knit the color A stitches, the orange stitches, and we slip the color B stitches, but with the yarn in front. So you don't have to really think too terribly hard on the alternate rows where we're working on the wrong side. You know, it's just the right side rows that you like have to think, oh, which one am I doing here? All right, so we're going to knit the first three stitches, just an orange for an orange. All right, then bring the yarn to the front. Slip the slip stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and then continue knitting the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Bring the yarn to the front, slip the slip stitch, bring the yarn to the back. Knit the next three stitches. Bring the yarn to the front. Slip the slip stitch. Bring the yarn to the back. Knit the next three stitches. Also, I was thinking this would make a really awesome pattern for a coaster. Oh yeah, because it's squishy, it's nice, and it's visually appealing. So I knitted those three stitches, so I have to bring the yarn to the front, slip the stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and then knit the last three stitches. One, and two, and three. And that is the end of row four, the full repeat. And you know I'm going to do this again. <laughs> but you can see how the shapes are really starting to come into play and interlock with each other. I think it's gorgeous. And I'm so happy that I could share this with you because this sort of thing, you know, can be very daunting. I know, believe you me, I know it can be daunting, but you just take your time, you know? And like I said, sometimes it helps just watch the whole thing through, then try to learn it, you know, then try to do it as you go, okay? I can't stress that enough, all right? Because I'm guilty of it myself, trying to do as I learn, and it just, it just doesn't click, and then I get frustrated, and then, you know, all heck breaks loose. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do another repeat for you, and we shall do this. All right. All righty, back to row one for the repeat. And what I already did was I took my orange yarn, and I brought it to the back so it's nice and out of the way. And then I got my yellow yarn here, okay? And we're going to continue right along and go with row one, which is, do to do again, being careful not to grab your tail, but grab the actual working yarn. It's very important. Believe you me, I should know. All right, so going to start by knitting one. Okay. And then slipping one with the yarn in the back, okay, then knit three. Also, sometimes it helps if you tighten up the previous color just a little bit, okay. 
So I knitted one, I slipped one, and now I'm knitting three. One, two, three. See the pattern starting right there? Isn't that neat? Then you slip the next one, and then knit three. Slip the next one, always purl-wise, and then knit three. Slip the next one, knit three. We've got two stitches left, so we need to slip that next one and then knit the last one. All right. Da 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 da! Are we getting there? Yes, we are, and that's row one. All righty, row two. So for row two, I'm going to continue by knitting the yellow stitches, slipping the orange stitches with the yarn in the front. So we have to shift our working yarn just a little bit, but that's, hey, that's no problem whatsoever. So we're going to knit this first stitch, okay? Then bring the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, Bring the yarn to the back, knit the next three stitches, bring the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and knit the next three stitches. Yarn to the front. Slip the next stitch. Yarn to the back. Knit the next three stitches. Okay, yarn to the front, slip the orange stitch, yarn to the back, knit the next three. Yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, yarn to the back, and knit the last stitch. Shaboom. Alrighty, and that is the end of row two. Ah, it's so pretty. All right, <laughs> and we'll continue on with row three. Alrighty, row three. So, continuing right along, I shifted my yellow over to the back, and I have my orange ready to go so that we can continue right along. All right, so for row three, also I'm just going to pull that a little. There we go. So for row three, we start by knitting three. And yes, I'm going to pull my yellow just a little bit so it's a little more snug. 
So I've got my knit three. Then we start in on the repeat, which is to slip one and then knit three. Slip one, knit three, all the way across. Slip one, knit three, And we're almost there. Slip one and knit the last three. All right, and that is the end of row three. See how it's really interlocking? Makes me think of a zipper, actually, the way it's all interlocked and everything. All right, so we will continue right along with row four. Alrighty, row four for the repeat. So it's just a matter of following suit with our pre-existing stitches. The only difference is, of course, since this is the wrong side, you bring your yarn to the front. So the first three stitches are just gonna be knit stitches. One, two, and three. We have a slip stitch, so bring the yarn to the front. Slip your slip stitch, bring the yarn to the back, Knit three, okay, we have another slip stitch, so bring the yarn to the front, slip your slip stitch, yarn to the back, knit the next three stitches. Okay, yarn to the front, slip the next slip stitch, yarn to the back, knit the next three stitches, yarn to the front, slip your slip stitch, yarn to the back, and knit the last three stitches. Ta -da! And there you go. Another repeat. So you can see where the slip stitches for this yellow, they go right over the orange and then the orange ones go right over the yellow. And that is why when you're on the wrong side, you need the yarn to be forward when you're slip stitching so that you're not passing over the, the slip stitch, okay? If that makes any sense. I know it, it seems a little bit weird, but you know, as you're doing it, it will make more and more sense. And I hope that this has made sense to you. I really do. Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty, back to row one. Because you know me, I just can't get enough. I want to do another repeat with you guys. Um, so for row one, i uh, got my orange yarn. And I have it going to the back over that way. And I have my yellow yarn all ready to go. Alright. So starting right on in again with row one, 
going to go right in with a knit stitch. Okay. And then a slip stitch. And then knit three. Also, just going to tighten my orange yarn just a little bit there. So knitting three, one, and two, and three. Okay, slip the next stitch, knit the next three, Slip the next stitch, knit the next three, slip the next stitch, and knit the next three. And we've reached the last two stitches. So slip this one and knit the last. All right, and that's the end of row one. All righty, row two for the repeat. As per usual, we're going to knit the working yarn stitches and slipping the alternate colors with the yarn in the front. So, knit the first one. Gotta slip the second one, but the yarn needs to be in front. Slip the slip stitch, yarn in the back, knit the next three. Yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, and yarn to the back. Knit the next three. Yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, yarn to the back. Knit the next three stitches. Yarn to the front. Slip the next stitch. Yarn to the back. Knit the next three. And we've reached the last two stitches, so yarn to the front, slip that slip stitch, and then yarn to the back, and knit the last stitch. Ta-da! Alrighty. Oh, it's just so pretty. Okay, and then we'll continue right along. All right. Alrighty, row three. So I have my yellow yarn from the last row off to the back here. And I've got my orange ready to go. All right. So starting right on in. All right, we're going to knit the first three. One, oh, I'm just grabbing my yellow just a little bit. Two, and three. Then slipping 
the next stitch, like so, knitting three, slip the next, whoop, knit three, and slip, and knit the next three, and slip, and knit the last three. Da, 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 da. All right, and we shall continue right along with the last row. Alrighty, row four, last but certainly not least. We are knitting our predominant color stitches, slipping the binaries with the yarn in the front. Okay, so we're going to knit these first three, easy peasy. So that's one, two, and three. Yarn to the front, slip the slip stitch, yarn to the back, knit the next three. Yarn to the front, slip the next slip stitch, yarn to the back, knit the next three, yarn to the front, slip the next slip stitch, yarn to the back, Knit the next three. And we're almost there. Okay, we have a slip stitch, so yarn to the front. Slip the slip stitch. Yarn to the back. And then knit the last three. All right, and then what you would do is because this is the color that we started with, all you would do at this point, you know, what I would do is I would then knit a regular row and then do a bind off row, okay? So that it would be even with your starting edge. That's how I would do it, okay? So I really hope that you guys understand the gist of this beautiful, lovely, squishy stitch. So much fun, and I'm so glad I could share it with you guys, because you guys are awesome. And uh, anything to do with color work, I, I just, I, I lose it. I drool over color work stitching. I really do. It's so much fun, and you can get some really neat effects. And so you can see the back is also quite pretty, um, you know, and it's very neat. You know, it, it, it's not, you know, crazy, loose, sloppy with various floats and things. You know, it's very neat, and I like that, you know. And uh, so at any rate, <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as always. And, you know, if you did, please give me a little thumbs up button down below. And uh, if you have any comments, I would love to hear from you as always. And also, if you want to see more, please hit subscribe, because I try to do as many possible videos as I can, whether it's knitting, crocheting, 
audiobook narration or on my other channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I play games, give funny little commentaries, and it is tons of fun. Um, and uh, so listen, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.